Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Now today's video is going to be really special because we will be talking about the results of the youth mobility scheme. So if anybody from India has applied for it, stay tuned to this video. But for those of you who do not know me, my name is Nikita and I make videos related to working as a healthcare professional in the UK. But also if any of y'all are students planning to come into the UK or plan to generally live in the UK and are worried about what life in the UK is going to look like, this is your time to subscribe to my channel, but also follow me on Instagram. My handle is Physiotherapy in UK, where I keep posting daily updates about this and connect with all of my followers there. So let's dive into today's content. So firstly, if you have been selected for the UK Youth Mobility Visa, there is something great coming up your way in this video. But for those of you who haven't been selected for this visa, unfortunately, your journey of coming through the UK to this particular route ends here. So because the results are out most of the applicants would have received an email stating if they've been successful or unsuccessful now in the email you will also receive some other additional details which we will go through in this video but for those of y'all who have been unsuccessful like i said your journey to come to the uk through this visa has ended but that doesn't mean that you can never come to the uk again through any other visa route I think I also heard another rumor recently saying that there were only about 600 positions released through the Youth Mobility Scheme visa this time around in July, whereas obviously in February, there were nearly about 3000 uh, visas being issued to Indian applicants. So do not be disheartened. But what this actually means for you is that even though you've been unsuccessful to this particular ballot scheme, you can still apply through other visa routes. So, now, some of the most important visa routes for healthcare professionals are the health and care worker visa, which is a work visa that is granted to all of the health and care worker professionals within the UK. Now, this is because obviously uh, UK has a very stringent shortage occupation list and most of the healthcare professionals come on under it. Now, if you are concerned about any of the queries related to this particular visa, I would highly recommend that you follow this video and the playlist under there because it has some really valuable tips for you. But for those of you who are planning to work in the UK as a healthcare professional, remember that you need to give a licensing or a registration uh, before you start practicing. Now, for most allied health professionals, that would be your HCPC registration. So if any of you all out there are in the process of starting your HCPC registration, this playlist right here is going to help you to do so. But for those of you who have been practicing for landing interviews or even clearing an interview but are not successfully landing any, do not forget to book a one-to-one -one session with me because that is our protected time to go through all of your application sentences, details and run through it and see if there's any scope for you to improve. Because trust me, many of you all make brilliant applications but they do not meet uk standards sometimes and that's one of the reasons why you are not being called for interviews so yes if you are in the process for it do not forget to book a one-to-one -one session with me guys now coming down to all of you lucky ones who've applied for the uk youth mobility visa and have been selected congratulations firstly but the journey is not over this is just the start now what you are going to have to do in the next few days is prepare a list of documents and then go ahead and make your visa application and following that my friends you will be lucky enough to come into the uk and stay for two years without worrying about a visa but yes let's talk about what are the documents you're going to be needing in the next few days that you need to arrange for yourselves before you make your visa application so the first thing that you absolutely need for this visa is your police clearance certificate now there are two ways that I've read about on the Government of UK website to get your police clearance certificate. Now, the first way is obviously through the passport office. But if any of you all have tried applying for your passport, you will know that there is a waiting list and you need to find an appointment at the passport office to physically go there, verify your documents and then get your passport. So this was the first way. But remember, you only have up to 30 days to put in your visa application for the youth mobility scheme, even though you've been successful in the ballot. And if your appointment at the passport office is sort of near the 30 day mark, then it's most likely that you will not be given your police clearance certificate. So let me suggest the second way, which is the alternate way for to this. Now, the second way is that you can go to your local police station and get a police clearance certificate from them. Now, the process for this can be different across different states in India. So I highly recommend that you go to your local police station and find out the process for yourselves. Now, the second most important document that you are going to be needing for your 
youth mobility visa is your tb test now let me remind you guys that if you are planning to use your tb test in the uk you cannot do this test from any random hospital in india there are very selected centers across india in selected cities only for example i know that there are test centers in mumbai pune noida lucknow bangalore etc but remember not all of the cities have your TB test centers in India. So what you're going to have to do is actually go through the link that I've given in the description box below, find your nearest test center, call them up, give them a ring and book an appointment for yourselves. Remember, they're fairly quick. So you should receive your TB test results within a day or two or maximum uh, three to four days. So it's not very time consuming. However, the difficulty might be that you might not have your TB test center within your city. So you might just have to travel to a nearby city to do it. But I think that's a small price to pay for this visa. Now, the third most important document that you're going to be needing for this visa is your degree certificate. Now, as a primary requirement for this visa, you need it to be between 18 to 30 years of age. But the second most basic requirement was for you to have your bachelor's degree at least. So this is what you need for your visa right now. You need to have your bachelor's degree from your college or from your university attached to this visa category when you make your visa application. Now, again, I would say take this a step further. For example, when I graduated from my bachelor's in India, I also had a degree completion certificate and I also possibly had like a course completion certificate. So I would say either collect your degree completion or your course completion certificate from your college and submit that as a part of your visa application as well. This just goes to prove that you have definitely completed your bachelor's in India, which is a prerequisite for this particular visa category. Now, I know some of you will be out there who might not have your bachelor's degree in English. So it could be in an alternate language, for example, Marathi or Hindi or even Kannada for that matter or any other language in India. Uh, I would recommend that obviously if you have your degree certificate in another language, please translate it into English, get it verified and translated by trustworthy translators because this goes as a part of your visa application and the UK Home Office will potentially have these documents for a really long time on your name. So definitely get your uh, documents translated if they aren't already translated into English and use them for your visa application. Now, the fourth major document that you are going to be needing for this visa is your bank statement. Now, as I've explained in my previous video, and I highly recommend you watch it because that has some really good tips on what you will be needing is the requirement to show financial proof for yourself to support yourself for obviously when you come to the UK. Now, the UK government has said that you need to have about £2,530 in your bank account for nearly 28 days. Now, I know some of the people had asked me in my previous video saying, Nikita, if I've had that money, can I just put it later in my bank account and then show it as a proof of fund? And the answer is no. You need to hold that account's money for nearly 28 days before your visa application. And again, remember, you need to do this within the 30 days from when you've received the email that you've been successful because you need to submit these bank documents along with your visa application. So what are the two things that you need to show your financial proof of funds? The first thing that you need to do is submit your bank statement, which will obviously have your name and your address and the details of your bank statement, which shows that you've held that amount of money for 28 days. That, that is £2,530 for nearly 28 days in your bank account, which is under your name and not your parents' name. The second thing I would recommend doing is getting a letter from the bank, which states that obviously you've been a customer with them and you've held this amount of money that is 2530 for nearly 28 days in a continuous holding period with them. Now, again, the reason I recommend this is because it's easier and it also adds to your verification and your sort of validity when you're applying for this visa to show the UK government that this Indian bank has certified this. Now, the easiest way to do so is walk into the nearest branch of your bank and ask them for this letter and ask them to put a stamp on it just so that you are reassured of the bank's true identity or validity. Now, coming down to the final step that you need to do before you submit your visa application is actually make your visa application. Now, the easiest way to do so is through the government of UK website. And I'll leave the link for that in the description box below. But it's a fairly straightforward procedure. And all you need to do is just keep following the steps. Look through all of the details and fill your application form. Now, please remember, guys, if you make any mistakes in your visa application form, you will have to either cancel that application and make a new application entirely or you might be able to do some changes. I'm, I don't think you're allowed to do many changes in your visa application form. So I would also recommend having somebody 
sit with you or review your visa application form while you are making it. Now, the second way to do your visa application form filling is through the link that would be given to you in the email that you've received stating that you've been successful for the Youth Mobility Visa India scheme. Now, again, like I said, this would be in the email that is available to you, but that doesn't mean that the visa form is filled for you. So you would have to go through all of the steps, put in all of the details and make that visa application. Now, like I said before, if you haven't already watched my previous video on this topic, please go ahead and watch it because it has some really useful steps about this visa application and the things that you need to look forward to or keep in mind. But that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, do let me know in the comments below or giving it a big like. Take care. Bye.